accordance with Master of the Law, Chapter 48, Section 15, notice is hereby given that the Bolton Zoning Board of Appeals is holding a public hearing on Wednesday, July 18, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the Hoffman Building, 697 Main Street, Bolton Mass. To hear and act upon an appeal filed by Tiago Vieira as a person agreed by the building inspector's determination that the storage of auto parts is not a customary home occupation under Section 250 21. Accessory uses of the Bolton Zoning Code in Section 250-11. Um, mixed uses does not allow the use of commercial building in a residential district or property located at 423 Harvey Road, Bolton Mass. Shown on Assessor's Map 7C, Parcel 63B. Okay. So, with that, um, let's first hear from the building inspector, and then we'll have the. Uh, uh, applicant uh, present, and then we'll have questions. Okay. Sure. How you doing? Good hey, Mike, Mike, when you speak, can you um, speak to if, if you have or if there's any guidance, like from uh, Mass Journal Law or about the. Um, Either customary or incidental, sure. those, those I aspects. Like I we will. have a little brief piece sure. in the vault. You know. Yep, I will. I'll, I'll go through the reasoning on my determination, uh -huh. okay. how I came to the determination, mm -hmm. and uh, if, if we could take it from there. Yeah, okay. And then if there's any questions. Sure. So you give your part, then we'll Yeah, I'm not going to go. Yeah. Then we'll I'm not going to go in any strategic order. No. Uh, mm -hmm. There's some information I'll give out. Mm -hmm. I think it all points to my determination. Okay. And again, it won't be in any specific order, but I think it'll be helpful for you to make the board to make their determination. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Uh, a new house was built <coughs> several years ago, a few years back, I think. How long now? About three. Three years, a few years back. Uh, after the house was built, the, uh, the uh, <coughs> person that built the house, they also, uh, the builder came in to do a barn. Mm -hmm. At that time, I think there was a co brief conversation that we may have had relative to them re re requesting what they could do as a home occupation. Mm -hmm. We had a brief discussion about that. I don't think there was ever a follow-up after that. I don't recall you ever coming in. We know, you know, there was some <coughs> talk back and forth with the home occupation, what you were limited on doing. Mm -hmm. It speaks for itself in the bylaw. Uh, uh, this past year, I did get a complaint, so I did, I did follow up on that complaint. So basically, we do allow under the bylaw, again, this will be in no uh, specific order, we do allow uh, home occupations. And we'll find that section if I tab it. Should have tabbed it. Give me a second hand. Okay, here we go. Home occupation. Okay, so the uh, this is the definition of our home occupation. It's an accessory use that's allowed in all districts. It says a home home occupation in all districts. <coughs> professional office or customary home occupation uses are permitted, mm -hmm. provided that, and then it goes down and it meets, and you've got to meet four different criteria mm -hmm. in the bylaw. And if you have a copy of that in front of you, yeah, you can see what those are. Without being redundant, uh, it speaks for itself. It has to be a profession or home occupation, mm -hmm. which is conducted by the resident. We do allow, we, it has to be incidental and secondary mm -hmm. to the residential use. And the external character of the premises is that of a one family dwelling. Not more than two persons other than the residents of the dwelling and not more than a total of four can uh, actually operate that. Mm -hmm. There can be no noise, vibration, dust, heat, odor, glare, traffic congestion, unsightliness or other nuisance uh, results which are discernible from other properties uh, or which is detrimental to the neighborhood. It speaks for itself if those criteria, a lot of these criteria can be met, however, the issue that we have with this particular, if they want to call it a home occupation, because I have decided, I have determined that it's not a home occupation, that it is not a professional office, and it is not a customary home <coughs> occupation. 
the uh, the attorneys uh, that's representing the applicant uh, basically does state under the bylaw home occupation is designed as and he has he has quoted the bylaw an occupation or profession engaged in within a dwelling or accessory building by the residents there too what he omitted in that quote of our bylaw is the word customary or customary home occupation so when we look at that we have to say first of all is it a profession now what you would find in a profession that is that well let me just first say the operative word to me here is not only a profession but it's also what is customary when you look up in black's dictionary which i believe is generally used for law cases uh, the word customary is what you would expect to see you would expect to see that in a residential district if it's a home occupation customs are norms of that that's correct and there's different definitions but that applies to this application here so so with so on that line of the definition in because in our bylaws there, there aren't sort of like examples of customary um, that's correct we may think about it by being a resident in town saying what's customary and saying molten <coughs> but from in, in mass general law do they say anything about like what's customary in massachusetts no i don't know mass general law i really don't think addresses uh, home occupations from what i've known in the last 15 years that i've been a zoning mm -hmm. official uh, but what we do find mm -hmm. is what is customary uh, and again I'm going to, I'll go to, uh, let's say, the town of Lunenburg's bylaw on the home occupation. You'll find home occupations probably in most communities. Uh, just to give you an example, what's customary? This, these are the customary home occupations that you find. You would find out, that, and this is not to say that this is Lunenburg. This is to give you an example of what's customary. The use of rooms, this is their home occupation as an accessory use in the town of Lunenburg. The use of room or rooms in a dwelling or building accessory thereto by the resident of the premises as an office, a studio, or workroom for a home occupation. So what you would historically see for home occupations would be the doctor in the center of Lemonstown, the lawyer in the center of the city. A lawyer would work in an office. That's an office use. You would have an accountant. You could have somebody that had a an art studio, a craft studio. Yes. They go to the barn, they make their crafts, they go to the flea market with those crafts. They might do engraving of, uh, of trophies. I know someone that had a home occupation in Lunenburg, they did engraving of trophies. <clears throat> they were in a house, they were in a room, they used the office, they used the barn, they used the garage, they used the cellar. <clears throat> These are customary home occupations. The accountant, the chiropractor, the craftsperson, uh, the, a studio for photography. What we find, uh, there's a lot of people now that as a home occupation, uh, when everybody was scaling down, they were, everybody's on the internet now. So a lot of people just work off the computer and they have a legitimate business running off the computer, but they're using just a room in their house as an office. So those are what are customary. So does that also speak to the, the nature of uh, incidental, like to the premises? So is it that a room or a part of a home is versus you have know, two structures and I don't know what the square footage use of the barn is, if it's yeah. a, one small piece sure. of that's used for it, or is it a, it's a fairly sizable structure, I drive by it daily, versus the home, is that incidental? Does right. that go to the, what you're talking about, what's happening in a room? That's Top correct. Custom. That's, I mean, that's correct, and I'm, I'm gonna, I'll get to even oh, further oh, than oh. that, but that's a great question. So what happens is you now have the office in your house or you're a, a carpenter and you have a workshop and you have all this equipment in your cellar nobody hears it nobody sees it he builds he might even build cabinets he might build furniture and then he goes and sells it or installs it somewhere you don't see any <clears throat> visible evidence that it's other than a home so what happens is in the building code what we would generally find is what's considered accessory use mm -hmm. There were many different accessory uses, but when you go, we have to look specifically at the residential use. So what I first do is I say, what district? Well, it's a home occupation. We know it's in the residential district. And what happens is a person actually 
in any type of business for what's accessory, it's usually a percentage, and usually it's about 10%, which is a well, in the last code, I don't know, in the newest code, because I mm -hmm. haven't had the opportunity, it just came out in January, to have to look at it. But it used to be, and probably still is, anything accessory within one use group is generally about 10% of that use, and they consider it accessory. In other words, you could have, uh, let's just say, uh, a cafeteria in an office building, and as long as it's less than 10% or 10% or less of that office use, it's considered pretty much the same use. If you go over that, now we're going to look at it as a place of assembly because you might have more than 50 people because it's a big office building. And then you have to treat that use group differently. But generally, 10% or less, it's considered part of the same use group. So when we evaluate I'd like to just go a little bit with the building code. When we evaluate uses, we look at the use first, then we look at the type of structure and what can be built under that use. Uh, the example of that would be uh, in this particular case, you know, I'll try to stay on this case. Mm -hmm. What I do first always for the building code purposes of when someone's building, I have to look at the use group. And I determine what is the use, now what are the requirements under the building code. That's, that's first and foremost. The accessory use by our definition of bylaw, which I will admit is pretty, pretty open, but it limits to what is customary. It limits it to be a profession. It limits it to be a home occupation. Again, those home occupations. Uh, mm -hmm. What is customary home occupation as mm -hmm. our bylaw reads? And some bylaws don't say the word customary, although a lot of them do. Mm -hmm. The accountant. He works in an office, the craft guy, the carpenter, the painter, the landscaper, the landscaper might have. We have a home occupation, I just had the police under violation, because he overextended what we would consider in Bolton a home occupation. Mm -hmm. Now you might have a son that has a landscaping business. If he has a commercial vehicle and a couple of people other than himself working that, that business, mm -hmm. which he's allowed under the home occupation, he might have, as Erica and I have limited, we, we say, what do you have? Then we'll evaluate what your use is. The guy has a commercial pickup truck, he has a trailer, he has a leaf blower, he has a mower. And he might have another plow and a pickup truck. You don't expect him to go rent out a commercial spot. He's got a small operation, he doesn't need a lot of equipment. He has a barn or a garage and he keeps it there. I would consider that to be a home occupation. But when you start pulling in, as over here, the front end loader, the backhoe, the chipper, the storage container, these are not home occupations. These, they've overextended in one particular case on East End Road, and the guy cleaned it up. He's in compliance as of this morning. That's an example of the home <coughs> occupations you would see. Okay, good question. Yep. Um, <clears throat> so a lot of the examples that you've utilized um, relate to uh, entities that are involved in the sale of services or non-tangible goods. Mm -hmm. So is, is, is it the case that the fact that there's sale of tangible goods, does that take it out of the customary or is it the specific tangible good that is? Um, mm -hmm. Maybe not, depending on the use, um, not specifically. I mean, a home, a home occupation, uh, you might have crafts. I mean, could, could somebody, we don't see people driving up to someone's house if they're doing crafts as a home occupation. They generally take them somewhere to sell them. Unless they're under the barn bylaw, like over here, mm -hmm. then they can open up and use. We have business uses that are allowed in barns. Yeah, it's to protect the old. They make a distribution of um, raw material. They say they're doing glasswork or something to their home, and then they do whatever their craft is and go sell it. In that's correct. Right. And, and, and but, a, that's a perfect mean, example. Right. So an antique shop. Uh, antique shops, uh, that would not be actually a home occupation because you would have regular business use there. Mm -hmm. You know, it would be like nothing more than just going to a flea market. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but we do allow that under our bylaw, which is not for tonight. Mm -hmm. But we, we have one that's right up the street over here in the center of town. That's that We've made that bylaw. We allow business uses in those 75 mm -hmm. years or older barns to protect those barns. That was that the purpose of it. But that's under a special permit by the planning board. Mm -hmm. As a matter of right, you can do a home occupation. So what I've done is 
I have to evaluate what that use is. Are there any other <coughs> home occupations that sell goods like, like this? Stores? Not the, not the sale of goods that somebody would come to the house. Uh, the distribution of the goods would be, we might see, again, just an example. I don't even know if we have anybody that's doing specific crafts like that as a home occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, we just gave a special permit to a woman on Sugar Road that has the old barn and she's got the antiques in there. Mm -hmm. That's how we, we deal with that. You have customers coming on a regular basis, mm -hmm. but, but somewhat limited. Mm -hmm. um, so what happens here is, and I think if I go through this, you'll get a clearer picture of it, that if you look at our bylaw, again, professional office or customary home, what would you generally see? When we uh, look at that, we do have our use table. And in our table of uses, in the residential district in the table of uses, when we look down, we see other retail wholesale or service wholly within a building and that's what this is. This is the wholesale, at least it's not retail because customers don't go there to buy off the shelf. What they do is they go there and they distribute. And as it was explained by the, uh, the lawyer representing the applicant, he says that they, uh, in the home occupation, they did a form of intent, I denied them, that's why they're here. The petitioner requested permission from the town of bylaw to utilize his property for the receipt, sorting, packaging, and or distribution of goods, products, and material, namely automobile parts. When you look at this, this is what you see, the plain view doctrine allows me to take a picture because the garage door was open, I did not go in the garage. Mm -hmm. You can see that they are operating forklifts with high pile storage of cardboard boxes, and they say in their in their explanation that they are actually they have products they have automobile parts in these boxes if you look in the back you'll see the whole barn for the most part i didn't see the whole barn but you can see that they have skids and stuff that are st stacked uh, with with automobile parts in cardboard boxes you also see a tractor trailer truck body Mm -hmm. that and you can tell by the tire marks that this forklift obviously has to go in and out in order to uh, in order to see the uh, in order to get the products off the tractor trailer truck so they're delivering the uh, the attorney for the applicant says that other than uh, an occasional FedEx truck that doesn't look like a FedEx truck and maybe that's from FedEx but that's not a FedEx truck you would see somebody getting some of their materials such as the glass works from a FedEx truck but we don't allow in the residential district um, I'm gonna just read it other retail wholesale or service wholly within a building the answer is no in our use table and that's right you want I can show you that if you like I wonder if it's part of what I have to do about yeah it is you just have to find right, it. right so. so it's right here in the residential district you can't even get a special permit to do what, what they're operating on there by admission they're wholesaling by admission they're wholesaling and they are repackaging distributing uh, by their explanation when I look at that use group so if I was to evaluate that building mm -hmm. with that particular use, and this was part of my determination, that building belongs in an industrial zone. It's an industrial use. It's actually under the, you don't find that use in the residential building code. We have two codes. One is the International Residential Code. The other one is the International Building Code. One and two family dwellings in condominiums up to three units. That's what you, what you find in the residential code. That's what it deals with specifically in solely. Every other use comes from the International Building Code, which we would consider to the layman on the street to be the commercial code. Mm -hmm. When you look at the use group for that type of operation, <coughs> again, and you can see that as witnessed in, in the picture. So these pictures are recent? Because yeah, that was probably in the spring. Okay. Yeah, I, I got the date on that. I can give you the date. Because I know just recently, um, I think it was a week or so ago, I mean, it was a 
Friday going to work. Um, I had to stop on one seven on um, Harvard Road because of, of I mean, it was like maybe it's a fifty seven foot was backing out and had the road blocked. Um, I don't know if they were delivering or picking up. Um, there were cars visible at the permit, but I don't know if they were delivering something. You know, so, so they were either they delivering or picking or up something. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, kind of wouldn't expect that on Harvard Road. <laughs> Well, no, I mean, you see things on our cars yeah, I mean, and trucks, but yeah. nonetheless, coming out of a residential and just looking at, okay, what is permitted under a home occupation? It's just, that was a question I was going to ask separately, but then when I see a different vehicle, it's, I don't know, the frequency, so I'll ask the applicant. Yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you would not see that. You would not see forklift in a home occupation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely not. So if you took that use mm -hmm. as a building official, mm -hmm. not as zoning officer, but as a building official, if you if that building belongs in what we it's an industrial it's actually a factory use group for industrial. So in the evidence of that would be under the uh, international building code, we are uh, section three oh six. Mm -hmm. We have factory, it's a group F, factory group F, three oh six point one in the current uh, commercial code not to be intended to be residential in any way uh, factory industrial group F occupy occupancy includes among others the use of a building or structure or a portion thereof for assembling disassembling fabricating finishing manufacturing packaging repair processing operations that are not classified under the H which is a hazard use group or Group S storage. This this falls into two categories in the in the, in the commercial code. This would fall if they had that use. Not if that use right there. If that if that building was actually bigger in square footage, they'd have to have a by the building code. They would have to have a commercial sprinkler system in it. It's just under the size that would require that because they'll probably allow you like twelve thousand square feet of that type of use. They do said, say that they, are, that they are distributing goods, they're packaging goods, they're sorting goods, they're receiving goods. So it's common that they're going to receive and they're going to ship out. They're packaging, storing. Mm -hmm. We get into the storage use group, and some uses are, you know, they go into both. Mm -hmm. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Storage use group S, again, in the commercial code. Storage use group S1 occupancies are building occupied for the storage uses that are not classified under storage use group 2. There's one and there's two. This falls into one and two in my opinion because of the nature of what they're storing and what they're doing. It says, but it's not limited to cardboard boxes, cardboard and cardboard boxes. And these use groups are generally established primarily for fire protection because certain things need certain fire protection depending on what you're doing, an office building, right. a little bit different. Uh, but this hits in the building code as an S1, S2 storage, metal pots, metals, mirrors, these are things, plastics, glass, that's what's in these boxes, automobile pots. Mm -hmm. Think of what's in an automobile. Mm -hmm. So they're, redis they're, pa they're redistributing, they're repackaging automobile pots. It's, it's an F use group and a storage use group under the commercial code. That tells me right there, this is not a residential use, let alone a home occupation. And that's the evidence you're, you're of the use. You're reading that from what the definition of, a, of the commercial code would be. Because you don't find it, and you won't find that use in yep. the residential code. No, I'm just, I'm just wondering if that's, that, that's correct. That's this, definition is covered. Yes, this is the International Building Code. Okay. We also have the International Residential Code, as I said, mm -hmm. is for one and two families and condominiums up to three units. Mm -hmm. They go up to three units for a reason, because when you go to the fourth unit, now you're going to sprinkle it. Right. Mm -hmm. That's the intent of the use. It's for protection of the public. Mm -hmm. And so that's what's happening here. By the building code itself, we don't find what they're doing in the residential code. It leads me to believe it's not residential in nature. It's not a home occupation. A home is a resident. To the layman on the street, what would he expect to see? You don't see this. You see these types of uses in an industrial park. If you put a metal skin on the outside of that building, you can make it look like the old fashioned barn all you want. It's still a factory use group because they have cardboard boxes in there. If it was bigger, they would have a commercial sprinkler system, not a residential sprinkler mm -hmm. system. 
You shouldn't have to sprinkle something if you have a home occupation. Uh, so as part of the building inspector's role, did, have you seen the whole the whole barn facility? Because there's, there's also stairways up and is it, so is there office space up there? Uh, I'm assuming the, there is. I never went in and inspected the upstairs. Yeah, the, it, it's just a staircase leading yeah. up to the Yeah, they never finished. You never finished yeah, the upstairs. Really Okay. I had asked I had asked the builder at the time that it was being built if they were finishing the upstairs and he said no. They have every right to have access up there. Oh, no, I, uh, I just no, and I questioned that too because I saw the stairs and I'm like, mm -hmm. hmm, I wonder if their offices are upstairs and all their distributions taking taking mm -hmm. place. What downstairs. was the complaint that you had received? Uh, the noise and the unsightliness of uh, the deliveries of the uh, and then uh, oh, the pallets and so outside. Of well, that's what, the pallets, but mm -hmm. the uh, tractor the trailer break. Right? Am I, am I allowed to speak? I'm sorry. I don't know if I'm interrupting you. No, I mean, we're, we're, we're getting his, uh, his um, you know, background for why he denied the, uh, the use now. So <clears throat> we're asking some fact-finding questions. But yeah. certainly your attorney and you will have your side. If there's something you need to say, it's, 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 we'll entertain it. It's not, um, we're not, I'll just try to commit it to my brain. Bring it back and get well, if there's pertinent I, I don't mind being interrupted. Yeah, it's just a noise complaint. Um, what what kind of noise? Uh, I don't believe it was specifically noise. I, I said it was more. The complaint was the uh, the introduction of tractor trailer rigs. They it actually it was it was it was called by someone was that it called a call me. Call or was it a written complaint? Uh, it, it was a call. Okay. It was a call that came in. A violation is a violation. No, I mean, right. I just have to choose if I'm gonna. Go after it or not? You know but, what but, I mean. Well, is there, do you is your protocol? Do you have to document like, okay, I received the call from Gerardo Hearn that said, you know, X Y Z neighbor. Uh, you know, so you, you know. Yeah, I'm oh, sure we have something in documentation. <coughs> I'm sure we have something. I mean, somebody could go back to the phone call or something. I follow up. Sometimes it's anonymous, and I just follow up on. So it may or may not be noise. Maybe other things. But it was just, That's correct. It was I'm not saying specifically noise. No, I'm not saying it was noise. Oh. Uh, I would consider that possibly unsightliness in a uh, in a residential yeah. district. Or if someone's not used to having a tractor trailer pull up, depending yeah. on if it, you know, I mean, or what it could be, no more noisy than normal, but again, it's, yep. I, yeah. I'm not gonna It was a complaint, I followed up on it. Okay. Uh, I went to go talk to someone, the garage door was open, I thought maybe the owner was the one inside the garage, I walked up to the front of the garage. Uh, the gentleman that was running the forklift told me the owner wasn't there. Mm -hmm. Under the plain view doctrine, I just took a snapshot mm -hmm. so that I have something. If the uh, garage door was closed from that point forward, at least I would have some indication of what was inside. And I was kind of just following up yeah. at the time, and I thought, like, whoa, wait a minute. Mm -hmm. This is a factory use group under the commercial code. And whether it's allowed to stand on that property or not as a home occupation, I can tell you if, if that meets the square footage requirement of the building code, you'd have a commercial sprinkler system there, which you would never be able to do on a well. But when we look at the bylaw, again, specifically, you can't even get a special permit for this. In the residential district, wholesale or service wholly within a building, no. I mean, there it is. If you look at it, if you read our definitions of what's allowed, if you consider what is generally customary as a home <coughs> occupation, if it's a duck, it's a duck. And this, this, in every way, shape, or form out of the International Building Code is a commercial use. It's actually a factory use group, and they do consider it to be industrial in nature. We don't have an industrial zone. And that is my primary reasoning uh, for disallowing it because it's it's a it's an industrial use it, you know, under the factory use group. Mm -hmm. It does it is not allowed by a bylaw, even by special permit. And to me, it definitively <coughs> does not fit as customary as a home occupation. Can I ask um, one more question. Yep. <clears throat> One of the examples you said of customary would be a lawyer's office. Oh, absolutely. So where would the lawyer's office fit on this list? It's not because we could not write a bylaw, nor could any town write a bylaw. That's why they put the word customary. You have to say to yourself, <clears throat> what? We're looking at the use. What type of profession is that? Profession. What type of profession? Mm -hmm. It's not a profession. 
thought the chiropractor. You know, that's that's not a profession, a painter, a carpenter. That's not a profession, an engraver. That's that's a profession. That's not a profession. So what do we look at second from that? What is customarily a home occupation? Okay, so the, the what lawyer, you would lawyer wouldn't be falling in the customary category, be falling into the professional okay. office category. That's correct. And you see that everywhere. Accountants, lawyers, go to the center of Lemonster and right around the center of town in the residence aid district. There you go. Okay. Hundreds of them. Well, not hundreds, but there's many of them around the courthouse. Mm -hmm. They took the old Victorian houses. You, you know, I used to go to a chiropractor in North Lemonster. Mm -hmm. He's in a cape. Mm -hmm. in a residential district. That's your customary profession mm -hmm. that you would see. There is nothing customary about this use <clears throat> and what solidifies that in my opinion and only my opinion as the zoning official is that when I look at how I would have to deal with that structure with that use when they get the building permit that's first and primary. Mm -hmm. If I knew they were packaging or had packages of cardboard and materials that are in the storage use group in the, re in the packaging, that's in the uh, factory use group, I would say, number one, you can't build that barn for that use because we don't allow it under the bylaw because you are a service, you're doing distribution, and you are wholesaling those products out. You're not giving them away for anything. You're not retailing them. You don't have stickers on them with a price and people are going in and putting off the shelf like an auto parts store, like Advance Auto or AutoZone, this to me is no different than AutoZone, you just don't go there. And when I Googled the business name, they had directions from another facility showing exactly how to get from Fitchburg, the Fitchburg facility, how to, and it could be under a different name or a different uh, business in Fitchburg, which they have every right to tell people how to get to here, mm -hmm. but the use isn't allowed, in my opinion, it's clearly, a factory this business group. has no connection to any business in Fitchburg. And, and that's fine. It's just, it, that's okay. But it did show how to get from Fitchburg right up the street. Are you in Fitchburg? Did you put a Google or something? What's that? We don't, I have no affiliation with anyone in Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. Well, there was, when I Googled the name of the company, it pointed to Fitchburg and it had the little blue how to get here from there on MapQuest and it went right up Harvard Road right to that property. Okay. And that's neither here nor there because I never even took the time to go and look at what's in Fitchburg because I know, as you said, that has no bearing. You could, you could be in any type of business anywhere in the world and you can always tell someone how to get to your place. That has no bearing, that's why I didn't follow up on it. My determination is primarily, it's not customary by the definition of customary and it's not a profession. You would not expect to see that use in a residential district in Bolton. If it didn't, and, excuse me, if I just finish, and to put the icing on the cake with my determination as my opinion, and in my opinion, we don't allow that type of use in the residential district, and you can't even get it by special permit, and home occupations are as a matter of right, and you can't even get a special permit for wholesaling or a service completely in a building, not in a residential district. Not in the residential district. You can do it in another district, and you can do that only by special permit in the business district and in the limited business district. You can't even do that in the industrial district or the recreational district. Now, I also cited mixed uses. So when we look at the mixed use table, we have types of districts and permitted uses. No building or structure shall be erected or used except as set forth here, and it goes on and on and on. And then it says, uh, in all districts, uses which are municipal, rural, agricultural, or conservation, or open space, are also can be anywhere in any district, right? They're additional to these uses. So when we look at our uses that are permitted in the districts, in the residential use, we allow what? Single family, residential uses. That's what we allow. We allow agriculture, conservation, those things are wide open anywhere. Business. For retail and service establishments where business are conducted wholly within the closed building or wholly or partially outside by special permit. That's on our table which says that type of, of uh, wholly with storage, wholly within the building is 
only allowed in the business and the limited business district by special permit. Can't do it by right. In the industrial district, we have for storage areas, office buildings, so we do say what our districts allow. We clearly don't allow that type of use wholly or partially within a building. It's a industrial factory use group. So if it was scaled back, just a, if, oops, so we had to it, if, it, if you went in there and it would just, you know, some much less limited like, use there, there was no uh, forklift, whatever, and there just some box. It, does the incidental nature make it, you know, because uh, incidental and customary seem to be uh, mm -hmm. you know, use, words used in the, and I'm trying to get to the, what's the scope of incidental, you know? Yeah, incidental is like it, it, like it's 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 secondary secondary to the use. It's incidental, but not only does it need to be incidental. The problem is, it can be it can be as incidental as as it can be, mm -hmm. but it's still not a profession, and it's still not something that's customarily or allowed, especially by right under home occupation, because we don't even allow it by special permit. What would what would change your mind? I guess the better way to ask that: what would change your mind about that? Because I mean, I could argue that it's a profession. It's the sale of goods, which is a profession, right? No, that, 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 no not in my opinion. There's nothing that, that's that fine. That's fine. Right. No, but in, in all due respect to me, a profession is, you're a professional. What do you need to be a professional? A landscaper. Probably. A landscaper is a professional? Because you said. Uh, you know something? He, um, he might consider himself a professional without an actual license to be a professional. An accountant must need to be licensed. A doctor must need to be licensed. The guy running a computer because he used to work for digital and now they cut back so they sub everything out so all of these people now work out of their homes on a computer home independent office independent contractor yeah independent, independent contractor home, home use on office we say we state that in most home occupation state you know well we don't state office but well i think we do uh, in the I guess my point is, I think there's some subjectivity to the, whether or not someone considers something a profession, as well as whether or not something mm -hmm. is customary. Mm -hmm. So we try and figure right. that out, and people's opinions may differ there. So. Oh, absolutely. If this is, I said many, many times, this is only my opinion. I, I am to, unbiased. I make to a totally out. unbiased determination. I'm not even from Bolton. Mm -hmm. Right. In your mind, what pushed, you know, so I guess you're, you're saying it's not a profession and it's not customary, and then there's the storage of goods. And the wholesale part of it, which is not part of the not allowed in the residential okay. district. That is primarily, other than that, if it's a duck, it's a duck. And when I say it's a duck, it's a duck, I don't mean that to be, you know, sarcastic. I mean that what I look at is as a building official, not a zoning officer, which I'm here as a zoning officer. Mm -hmm. As I look at it as a business official, if I saw what they're doing, mm -hmm. at the magnitude of which they're doing, and this board can make any determination it would like. That's a factory use group. The book doesn't lie. If it's a duck, it's a duck. Mm -hmm. If you put a metal skin on that, you would customarily find that in an industrial park. How are you guys defining wholesale? What's the definition of wholesale that you're defining? I never looked that up, but I would say when somebody wholesales something, they sell it to a retail or retail outlet. You might be putting that in a cargo container or a tractor trailer. I mean, I don't know. If it was blown glass that I was putting in a box and shipping it to a, a customer, we don't sell retailers. retailers. It would be, it would be, it would be, uh, it would still be a factory use group because when you look at that, I, I'm sure you're not familiar with the building code. But you just and I don't expect you to be. But when you look glass. at use, if when you look at different uses, this would be the. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me get my glasses on. I'm sorry. This is the storage use group. If you want to hold this side right here, please. It'll tell you cardboard boxes. And you have tons of cardboard boxes. They have it's different right, passes. Yeah. That's correct, but they, they, they're saying, there's another section in this that actually says uh, that the, on the storage use group, I'll read this quickly. Uh, storage use group, again, out of the commercial code, among others. Buildings used for the storage of non-combustible materials. You probably have combustibles, right? But, no, but some of them not, aren't. Not any of them but it says, but it goes on and says, Materials such as products on wood pallets, we got the wood pallets outside as of yesterday, they were at the end of the road, uh, or in paper cottons with or without single thickness division, or in paper wrapping such as products, uh, such as knobs, handles, film wrapping, storage, includes but not limited to metal parts, mirrors, metals, 
plastics, you can go down. Mm -hmm. What they do is they try to tell you the different use groups because you, you need a different type of fire protection for those, and that tells me, and you're not going to get a, a residential sprinkler system for that type of use mm -hmm. because it is not a residential use, and you should have a home occupation or profession, not just any type of business use, mm -hmm. a home occupation. A home is a dwelling, what would you expect to see? You would never expect to see that type of use. Mm -hmm. And that is how I made my determination. I take no offense to, to this board if they were to mm -hmm. limit him uh, or, or uh, do something else or allow it. That I, I don't mind. Mm -hmm. But I did my job unbiasedly. And these are the things that led me to my determination. It is definitely, in my opinion, mm -hmm. not customary because you don't expect to see it. Mm -hmm. And the reason why you don't expect to see it because when you go to the, you don't find it in the residential code. You can use an office in your house and it's still a house. You can use a craft shop in your barn and it's still a, a residential use. The home occupation that you would customarily see is, hey, I make cabinets in my solid. Why do I have to go to a commercial space? That makes sense. The guy makes them, he brings them to the site that he works. The painter, the landscaper, the painter has ladders. He has all this stuff. You can't store it outside. They're not storing anything outside. It's not unsightly other than the large container. But you, you would, uh, when I was in Lunenburg as the building official, I have to make determinations under the bylaw. And the guys are paying it. I said, that's fine. You can't have any visible that it's anything other than a residential. You might have one or two ladders outside. Why? Because you customarily see that as a <clears throat> residential property. But you're not going to store lifts of paint. You're not going to store lifts of sheetrock outside. Those things you can't do. But you can have your equipment in your garage. There's probably some people that have more equipment than a carpenter. But you would expect that type of use. And again, something simply as somebody sitting down and engraving trophies in their basement. That's a home occupation. But this is how I found my determination. Not allowed in the bylaw. Not allowed as a residential use. And under the building code, it's a factory use group, which is industrial in nature under the commercial code. Okay. Now, if, if the barn were used, like if somebody had a garage and they kept, and they had a two car garage, they had two cars in there, they had one car and a lawn mower and various other like lawn equipment or whatever, and they had like these parts in boxes, like stacked along the wall, like mm -hmm. five or six boxes. The, the, that would that acceptable. Count as, absolutely. That's acceptable absolutely absolutely so it's like the scale of it that, like well the scale and the type so uh, I would say this here's Lunenburg to give you that example and we're not matching Lunenburg but to give you the example you're talking exactly how home occupations work section D under their home occupation from the exterior of the building so used there is not visible any display of goods products storage of materials or equipment regular parking of commercial vehicles or any other exterior indication other than that the premises are used for residential use. C. No stock in trade is regularly maintained except for products of the occupation itself. This is Lunenburg. Mm -hmm. Except for the products of the occupation itself <clears throat> or for goods or materials which are customarily stored not just stored, mm -hmm. customarily, why? Because it has to be customary to residential. Customarily stored, used, or sold incidental to its performance. I'm taking in the glass, I'm a glass blower, I'm in my garage, I'm blowing glass. You gotta bring your glass product in. The FedEx truck pulls up, that's allowable in Lunenburg. That would be allowable here in my opinion. But it's not just the FedEx truck that's showing up mm -hmm. and they have skids and they have cardboard boxes with the types of materials and not limited to what is in the building code. Mm -hmm. It's clearly an inst it's a factory use group, which is, it'll say factory F use group in the industrial group. And it's industrial in nature. Uh, bylaw doesn't allow that. It clearly doesn't allow service mm -hmm. or storage wholly within a building in the residential district. If it was the glass blower, if it was the engraver, they drop off the trophies. That's where you would see those goods, as you speak of, would be delivered and they would be used and stored. The painter might have his lattice, that's his equipment. He might have a pallet of paint for his next job. He might have more, he might all have all the excess paint 
that he had before. The carpenter might have wood that he brings in so that he can make his cabinets. That is customary for that type of use. So it's my opinion, based on reviewing the bylaw, how our home occupation as a matter of right is allowed. Under the bylaw, that type of use that they're, that they're doing there is clearly not allowed. Storage wholly within a building in the residential district. You can't even get a special permit for that in our zoning table. And when I look at the building code, it is not a residential use. I would have to look at that building, and I do look at that building currently as an industrial use. It just doesn't meet the limitations where it's so big it needs to be sprinkled. That's why I don't need to get involved in that aspect of it. Good. Well, thank you. And uh, let's have the applicant um, present your fact patterns, and then we can open it up to the audience. And so I'm Christopher Yates, <coughs> Fletcher Tilton Hudson, and I brought pictures of the barn. Can I sit up here? Truck. Do you want more? So we brought pictures of the barn as it is today. So this is a barn that is um, on the same lot as they have a 4,000 square foot home. This barn is incidental to use of the home. You can see the children's swing set right next to the barn. Um, so I just thought you'd want to see those. There's no evidence, exterior evidence of any sort of what is the square footage of the barn? 2,800 square feet, of which a lot of it is also used for personal use. All right. so, um, so by definition of the fact that it's smaller than the house, it so is when you say incidental and accessory. Yeah. Um, I just asked them to take pictures. No, today. that's fine. Okay. So has there been any recent cleanup effort? Yeah, we put a fence up just the fence, in case. Okay, the fence was, right, that's new. When the but house was built, we didn't have uh, a neighbor living next door. Okay. And I figured if I don't have pals mm -hmm. outside, I'm not going to. Yeah, okay. So, the, and these are just because recently, you know, I drive on that road every day to work toward West, to um, Boxborough. And so before I knew we had a, a, an appeal here, mm -hmm. um, I've seen, as I said, uh, I didn't see a, a red truck or tractor like that, but I've seen. Can I see that picture? Like recently, last uh, I think it was a, two Fridays ago, uh, a big white 57 foot trailer backing out. I had to stop on Harvard Road. Wait, too. Now, we get the door that. was open and there were like cars and vehicles inside. Those are all personal. Those are so, my cars. Okay, yeah. so that was a question because again, I don't know much yeah. about the He owns of six mm -hmm. private vehicles of his own. Okay. Uh, and three motorcycles of your own. There's absolutely no storage okay. or any. Okay cars related to a business mm -hmm. store. Okay, so again, uh, uh, just seeing things in and out, it was just a question as it okay, in preparation for an appeal or something, was anything changed or altered? So that's fine. You know, no. so it's just what it's the okay. frequency of a shipment like a like a trailer or something mm -hmm. coming to the house would be one to you know, maybe like once a quarter. So mm -hmm. three to four times a year. It's very so that one was in April, and then, did you recall having one like a couple weeks ago? Like, like, yeah, that one was there for, you know, maybe 25, 30 minutes. Okay. And so, so they come in and interact, things like that. On, not Once every two months. months. Once every two oh, months, okay. yeah. Okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. Which we would define as incidental. That forklift is actually his. It's not really necessary in the use it's of the business. Just to speed up the trucks in and out so mm -hmm. people don't have to stare at trucks in my driveway. I don't need it to operate. I can get rid of it if it's going to make anyone happier. Make me happier. Yeah, if you if somebody has a problem with that lift, it's not necessary for the business. It can be... But it has been up. used in the business currently. So that's... Yeah. Mr. Chairman, I just want to make a comment. I just want the board to be sure that they know that my determination was based on what I saw when that picture was taken. Correct, yes. Mm -hmm. And then the applicant sent in his form of intent mm -hmm. as I requested, and I denied it based on what I saw and what you witnessed in that picture. Now, that doesn't mean that they clean the place out. They may have, and that could, it could be a different story today, but mm -hmm. my determination was made solely on what I saw when I visited the site. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right, so, so basically what the applicant runs out of this <coughs> Are these part of the same ones or these different? I, I just made multiple copies. There's multiple okay, multiple copies. Okay. Is an internet business, which I would define as a profession. Um, and there are no 
like we said, there are quarterly visits as far as these trucks are concerned, but the only activity you would see at this barn would be a FedEx truck, which the building inspector specifically noted is allowed. Um, you'll have a FedEx truck coming to deliver or pick up goods. Um, well, it's not the only door because obviously we sell so the other, other than about once every three, three months, you might see months. one of these trucks. Okay. Um, and the only thing you'll ever see with frequency are FedEx trucks. Um, there's there was a lot of talk by the building inspector relating to Lunenburg. I, I mean, I think that we need to go by what the Bolton bylaws mm -hmm. say. Um, an internet business is a profession. It is um, ancillary to the use of the premises. The barn is ancillary to the use of the premises. The entire barn isn't used um, for this purpose. He has six vehicles on the property that are his own, um, three motorcycles. You have a golf simulator in there as well, correct? Yeah. Um, so the square footage of the barn doesn't even, uh, what would you estimate is the square footage that is used for this? For actual storage, maybe half. Which I would the square defense. footage of the whole barn? Like 2,800 square feet, I think he said. 2,800? Okay. Is that what you said earlier? 2,800? Yes. 2,800. Half of it is uh, oh, storage. It's not. Oh, we'll, 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 we'll. I wish it was. Mm -hmm. So under your bylaw, um, a home occupation is defined as an occupation or profession engaged within a dwelling or an accessory building, which this mm -hmm. is, by a resident thereof for use accessory thereto, which this is. The profession or home occupation is conducted by a resident of the premises, which we do meet. He, is, he um, operates this internet business. The use is clearly incidental and secondary to the use of the premises for residential purposes, and the external the character of the premises is that of a single family residence. If you're looking at this, it looks like a single, it's a, it's a 4,000 square foot single family residence with a barn with no evidence of a of a business from an exterior standpoint. Not more than two persons other than the residents of the dwelling and not more than a total of four are employed at any one time. He has one part-time employee. So we're far underneath the threshold for that. No noise, vibration, dust, heat, odors, glare, traffic congestion, unsightliness, or other nuisance results <coughs> which is discernible from the properties or which is detrimental to the environment. This happen, This you'll see this once every few months, but other than that, all we have are FedEx trucks that come um, and deliver or pick up. So I would argue to you that under the Bolton bylaw for an internet business, we um, meet the th all four thresholds. Mm -hmm. And I think it's less intrusive than, uh, he kept making references to landscapers. I think it's less detrimental to the neighborhood than, than a landscaper would be. There's no, there are, this, this internet business has no commercial vehicles, no commercial trucks, no ladders. Um, everything is contained within the building. Um, so what are the products in the building? They are, and I think part of the problem is that the product r relates to automobiles. So there, I don't. I just want to make it clear that there's nothing happening in this barn relating to this internet business that has anything to do with oil. Um, so what are the products then? I mean, intake pipes, uh, charge pipes. Exhaust, that kind of thing. It's, it's all, all boxed. It's nothing that's being worked on in the premises. There's no, and correct me if I'm wrong, but really are, are the boxes, like as far as packaging, that might be a little bit misleading in this in this petition. Can you describe what the daily process is? Uh, the boxes come in off that truck and then I put a label on it and they go out on a FedEx truck. So we don't repackage anything. In, inside, if, if anything is being repackaged, it's being opened so we can put a sticker in or something. So how much product's in there on any given day and how much sits idle? I mean, as far as how, does it, what's the turnover? I mean, I so so is there storage like? No, nothing's being stored lo long term. Everything turns over every time you see one of those trucks come in. So it's, I'd say every three to four months is the turnover of anything that sits on the shelf. Um, question on the 
boxes look like they might have multiple items in them, let's say, uh, you know, 12 side view mirrors for argument's sake in a single box. You would break that up and ship one to Joe and one to Harry and that sort of thing. Yeah, if it comes out on a crate or something, it'll be a crate of, you know, 12 intercoolers, which now, are radius. The, 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 I guess the public safety issue I'm curious about is if that box is filled with uh, styrofoam peanuts, that is a... Uh, fire hazard. I mean, that stuff goes like crazy. So, I mean, that storage, it could be an issue from that standpoint. From a yeah, everything, I couldn't tell you what everything's packaged mm -hmm. with, but a lot of the products, since their exhaust parts, don't have any packing peanuts in them. They're just in the start. Mm -hmm. If I may, Mr. Chairman, what percentage, I know, I, I am not, I did not go in the barn, so I'm not aware that there's any other use in the barn other than what I could see. Yeah. And obviously you get some high packaging, you know, with the forklift stuff. Uh, I'm assuming that the back side of that garage, you have other vehicles, is that correct? And you have your weight set or whatever? Yeah, I have a lift. Or a uh, golf thing? Yeah, there's a, the golf simulator and there's the auto lift that I use for personal use. There's a car on there. So what percentage of the barn would you say you're actually using for this use? For storage? I mean, percent square foot wise. You said about 1,400 square foot, I think. Yeah, Four, half. Half. half of it? Yeah, yeah. About half of it. Okay. Okay. If, if that, yeah. So what's on the up, what's on the upstairs? Is Nothing, it's empty now. Is it an attic or is it an empty It's, uh, it's, it's uh, just empty. There's nothing up there. So is it attic? Is it a floor space or is it just open? I mean, there's a floor. Okay. Uh, there's plywood on the floor. Plywood, beams, beams, yeah. Yeah. So was there something up there? Like as no. far as because you have the ladder? I mean, I just again I drive by it, so I don't know. The plan was to yeah. turn it into like a man town or something. Okay. I just never okay. got around to it. Mm -hmm. right. Now something like he kept mentioning glass blower. He kept mentioning uh, another one. I thought of was like uh, if somebody was a potter doing pottery, like you would have the same thing. You would have boxes. You would have FedEx trucks coming. This is no different. There's nothing going on that's commercial. This is an internet business, and it's not, there's no mixed use here. It, it's, it's products coming in, it's products going out. Just like, just like the glass blower, just like the pottery. Except that, well, not, I, I won't say except, because the difference, at least from optically, when I've seen either, I mean, would be someone from the Bolton Artisans group or something you know, that has, you know, you know, maybe FedEx delivery of material or something, but it's not like I don't think I ever saw you know, tractor trailers, even if it's once a month or once a quarter, you know, pulling into a residential <coughs> neighbor, uh, blocking a street, and you know, ten, even if it's a 15 minutes, 10 minutes pulling in an hour or something like that, of that scale. So it just seems like that it turns really into a much, much larger endeavor or co commerce than, say, you know, uh, well, maybe, you know, again, maybe it's under the customary, um, but again, we're, we're open, we're just trying to find mm -hmm. out, you know, what's the real purpose there. Mm -hmm. If you have a dumpster delivered for a, for a basement you're finishing or something, mm -hmm. and they're doing some work, it's a almost a 40-foot container, so I'm just dropping off at your house, mm -hmm. and if I was doing, you know, if I, I had my basement finished, mm -hmm. uh, that dumpster was there for maybe two months, and then another dumpster came. Well, that's a remodel of a home project, a building, you need a building permit for that, to do that effort probably, and either that's an allowed or an, uh, I would think a, uh, a customary use that you would expect to happen during the time during demolition is to have that waste filled up and then taken away. So, mm -hmm. but if it's stored on your site after the building permit was issued and then the work was done, then I'm sure someone would come in and say, wait a second, Building inspector, we got this you know, tractor on here that's stuffing it. You know, it's a detriment to the neighborhood. You know, please have it removed. You know, so. Um. Okay. So, if I understand correctly, the business itself is run from inside your house. You have an office in there, but you do your distribution or your your intake and out um, and distribution of your of the parts that you're buying and selling through your barn. Yeah, uh, there's a computer also inside the barn, but okay. yeah, mo work's done at the barn, at the home. Okay. And you're shipping to consumers. It's yeah, yeah we're not shipping, It's not. there's no wholesale going yeah. on, it's directly to consumers. How's the barn in short? 
Is it insured as a business? Or is it... Uh, I don't think it is insured, to be honest. I think it's... Uh, no, it's but definitely it's insured because it's on the right? property. It's under, yeah, it's under the homeowner's It's insured insurance. residential. Yeah, residentially, sorry. Mm -hmm. Has an open up roadway. I'm the neighbor directly to the left of them. My driveway runs parallel right to the driveway where those trucks come in. Every Before, yeah. um, so when you speak, your Sorry. name and my address. Name is, yeah, my name is Mark Ordon. Uh, Mark Ordon. Mark Ordon. Okay. Yeah. I uh, go to Lancaster. Open school systems. My dad is a you know small business in the Lancaster Gardens, about a mile away from the What's shore. your address, Mark? I'm at 413 Harvard Road. Okay. Right next door. Okay. So I'm, not, I'm the only direct neighbor he has, right? Um, there's no one on the right side of him, I'm on the left side of him. I have a home office, I work for a company out of my, out of my home office. My window looks at their driveway all day long. Mm -hmm. So I see the FedEx trucks, and that's about it. You know, the, the tractor trailer, like you said, maybe once a quarter, half a year, you know, something like that, I, I've seen there. Um, for me, there's no issue. I mean, I'm not sure what the, any complaints they made, but I think it's for me. Um, you know, it's the internet business, I would say customary. You know, that's for 2018, that's pretty customary to have an internet business now. You know, it's, I'm not sure where that, that comes from, but you know. My dad's a small business owner. They started it out of their house in the 70s, and you know, it's uh, trying to live the dream, man. You know? it's, uh, this is my take on it. I just want to come and support. There's no issues from the neighbors, no complaints. Um, and you're the closest okay. neighbor? I'm the only neighbor, pretty much. All right, so, so yeah, we, uh, do you have other points? You had another hand up. I didn't want to, no, I didn't want to interrupt. Take, no, you can take another question. Okay, so, got the question here? Yeah, I am one of the neighbors. Okay, so, I I, so the before you speak, members. name and address, please. Gary Doig, 403 Harvard Road. Okay. I can't per se, I drive by their house every day. I've been in the neighborhood a long time. And it's, I'll tell you, it's a very unique neighborhood. There's a combination of old, you know, the old Weatherby farm, you got a combination of a lot of new houses out back mm -hmm. on Drummond Hill. I mean, it's a unique uh, area of Bolton. I love it. Uh, it's a residential area. And I, and I, you know, when I heard the new house was going up, I said, hey, okay, it's another nice house. And then I heard they were going to build a barn. I said, hey, man, I love barns. Let's get one thing straight. That is not a barn. All right, that's a commercial building that was painted red to look like a barn. It has a couple of fancy windows in the front. He's got a distribution business going there. I'm not opposed to anybody making money. Take it and go to a commercial area. The last time I saw a tractor trailer, they was there for probably four or five days sitting in the, in the driveway. And it's not the only time. All right, this is a residential neighborhood that people aspire to, uh, to move there. There are little kids around. <coughs> and it, maybe the people that live right next door have little kids and they don't care. I'd be a little concerned. Now, there's that day that goes by. I don't know these folks. I, and again, you know, I, I, you want to make money, make money, but you know, it, 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 it's a nice neighborhood. You know, I, I see paddles constantly there, piled up in front of a place, you know, to the point where at times they probably could have been dangerous. If, you know, little kids are like, hey, let's go check this place out. You know, they fall over. You know, what about uh, the, 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 uh, the forklift? I mean, let's, let's get to the chase here. The forklift is there to load and unload. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a, a, I saw the picture and I've seen it outside. It's a pretty nice forklift. You know, a red, you know, I don't know anybody around me that has a forklift like that in their garage. All right, I mean, cutting to the chase, you know, it's a business. He's selling auto parts. Where he's buying them, we don't know. Where they're going, we don't really know, you know? Doing it on a commercial lot. Now, I'm not the only one. There's you know other neighbors around and say, geez, what's going on over there? Mm -hmm. Well, we don't really know. Well, we have two neighbors here. One has spoken favorable, one is less here. So that uh, yeah, you know. I you know, I, I I think the thing is is that, you know, maybe this got me rolling a little bit, is is I feel like 
you know, somebody pulled the wool over uh, the eyes, we're going to build a barn. Maybe that's nice, you know? Yep. Doesn't look like a barn. I mean, it's painted red, and all of a sudden there's a business. And all of a sudden there's four trucks. And all of a sudden there's, you know, three or four cars and some people going in and out. You know, it's, it's, it, it, it's a nice neighborhood, and the, 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 the integrity of the neighborhood is, is being lessened. You know, I mean, that's that's coming from me. I got, again, nothing against these folks. Mm -hmm. Everybody up there, uh, I don't want to see tractor trailers. I don't want to see, you know, pallets. Mm -hmm. I don't want to see somebody, you know, running a business that's a commercial business in a very nice Bolton neighborhood. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, you know, it's cut and dry. It's a it's a residential property, you know. I mean, it, hey, you know, down across the street we own a little bit of land. Geez, maybe I'll clear that and put up a Dunkin' Donuts. You think the neighbors will like that? Well, that's a different. Well, it is but, different, but well, it, I, I, it, I it would change. Where you're it would change the neighborhood dramatically. Of course it would, but but that's. That's a Dunkin' Donuts with a big red sign and that, a big, you know. That's moving in a different direction. But I, mean, I understand your point that you're, from your perspective, it, it's it, residential it, and. Right. It, 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 it should be, by law, cut and dry. Mm -hmm. Residential property, commercial business. You know, don't hide it under an internet business. Mm -hmm. you, you know, it's everybody's doing some kind of internet little thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I use the internet every day, but my business isn't. You know, 35 miles away from here in a commercial lot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Mike. No, I, and I, I was just going to say again. I made my determination based on what I saw, but when you look at the bylaw, mm -hmm. it says that in the residential district, retail, wholesale, or other service, wholly within a building, doesn't say one skid of it. Mm -hmm. Doesn't say the whole barn of it not allowed in the district. Doesn't tell you the quantity mm -hmm. of material to use. Mm -hmm. That's not allowed in the business. The professional or the home occupation, someone bringing in incidental things for their craft, for the carpenter, for the engraver. The IT guy is the guy that, I don't know, usually works out of his house, but he could work out of his farm. It could be either or. But we don't limit and we don't say if you go over so much of that wholesale service, it's a service, it's retail. He just said now it's retail. Now they're doing a retail distribution in a residential district uh, by law, and I'm going by what is written for Bolton. I'm unbiased in my determination. Mm -hmm. I would look at that and say, I'm sorry, you can't do that even under a special permit. It doesn't say if it's one pallet or if it's 10% or if it's half. We're not wholesale and we're not retail either. There's nobody coming to this property. Well, how do you how do you make money if you're not wholesale or retailer? Because it's through, it's it's an internet business. It, 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 retail requires somebody to come and purchase. There's no there are no customers that ever come to this property. And under the building inspector's argument, I think he's arguing everything he said about this barn and what he would allow and not allow there. I think you're procur you're procuring landscapers. I think that what you're saying is, I mean, are there any other landscapers? I think this is less intrusive than a landscaper. There's nothing commercial about this. From I'll give you an example, if I might, on landscaping. Mm -hmm. Sorry. One on Harvard Road, right down the street from there. Well, they're probably all over the place because it's something you'd see. I guess I have. I'm going to show you this. This is on uh, East End Road. Complaint came in. There's the truck. Oh, that truck. just had complaints before. I know that. Yeah. They, they seem to creep. Yep, they so creep. Look, they always there's creep. the landscaper yeah. that overextended. He's got trailers. He's got trucks. He has a storage bin. He has chippers. And we have none of that. Right. I'm going to show you something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See that? Can I see the other ones? That you can see? Yeah, I don't know. It's not that clear, but you can see all the stuff they have. Then there's more. 
that's just one picture. So I'm sorry. That's yeah. exactly okay. That was uh, from the road. that was July sixth. Let me see. There you are. I mean, how many employees? Watch this. How many cars? How many trucks? Trucks. Trucks. Look at the cars, and they're they're already going to work. They're already going out to work. Look at. So the don't, point, the point don't is, it's it. not just landscaping. It's right. I don't want to show you what happens to that type of use when you talk to landscapers. That was July sixth. This is today's Wednesday. This is this morning. Today, see that mm -hmm. at seven fifty nine today. You see those cars? Three to four of them are associated with the people that live in the apartment. He will not have those men, that many cars there. Right? Three or four are associated with the apartment and that's what the lot looks like today. He's got one bobcat to remove and it probably left today. That's what it looks like today after enforcement. Clean. I think you're making our point because ours looks better than that. We don't have any employees. You know, we have one. Well, well, all employee. I'm showing you is when they're in violation and they overextend and they do something other than the use they were permitted under the home occupation, I put it in order. Right. And when you put that back in order this morning, our barn, our space looks 10 times better than that. Oh, I, you know something? I 100% agree. If I drove by your, this gentleman's property, right. I have. So I didn't have I didn't have an issue with it until that tractor trailer rig showed up, and I got a complaint. And then when I saw what is inside, I look at the bylaw, and it says service, wholesale, retail, or service, wholly within a building. That can be your IT guy. They're talking about what you're doing. You're you're servicing. You're not retailing and you're not wholesaling. What are you doing? You're distributing your product. And that's what I look at now because it's not unsightly, I agree, but the bylaw doesn't allow that type of use. Under a home occupation, it's customary and that's why we allow it. And if you ask Erica, I always bounce it off her and we have somebody put in writing exactly what you have. Do we do that, Erica? exactly what you have for equipment because if you over he has a home occupation he overextended it this type of use as this gentleman said under our bylaw in my opinion as a zoning official clearly is retail wholesale or other service wholly within a building is not allowed the landscape but what the trailer is because I would customarily I think that my son might have a little lawnmower business uh, with a couple of trucks for each of the two employees. And if you call this gentleman, he knows he can have two trucks for his two employees, other than the people that live there. He obviously can have one for himself. And that's what he's going to have. And he's only going to have a couple of cars that show up there to jump in those two trucks. And he said the rest of the cars will be associated with the apartment. There were nine cars in there. And I got the phone call about it this morning also. He has nine cars and he knows he can't have the nine. And he won't have the nine. Mm -hmm. I'm saying, I love seeing that. Mm -hmm. You can't have the tractor trailer rig, in my opinion, because we don't customarily see that. Now, if it's the opinion of this board, and I'm not from Bolton, that under a home occupation, four times a year, I don't know if that thing, he, this gentleman said it's been there for four to five days at some time. There's never been a truck there for more than no, not a few hours. One time in the winter because of we had ice storms. <laughs> well, that's okay, because I didn't witness it, so no. I'm gonna believe what you say. It was three but days. But if it's yeah. customary, it was three days. a FedEx truck pulling up to anybody's house is customary. A tractor trailer rig pulling up to anyone's house is not customary. It was safe delivered a couple of days ago, and it came on a tractor trailer. Well, you have a safe. I mean, if that's the way that needs to be delivered, you, the dropping off a safe is not a business if operation. If you buy furniture on the That's internet, not a business operation, in my opinion. All I'm saying is, if you look at this from the outside, 100% in compliance. If you look at the activity that's taking place, how else do, do you label that as an IT? Everybody has a computer in their business today. That's not an IT business. Are you, you know, that's, that's a distribution. They're distributing. Wholesale, retail, 
or other service partially or wholly in the residential district under Bolton's bylaw is not allowed. If this board feels that that use can be a home occupation and I'm in error and that tractor trailer rig can show up four times a year, I'm good with that. But I'm not the zoning board and I didn't write the code so I have to look at what I see and analyze it unbiasedly and that's what I did. I could be wrong. I said that at the beginning of the meeting. I've been in front of this board before. You know it, and I've stated several times, this is my opinion as the zoning issue. I take no offense to it. If this board overturns it, I respect this board, and I respect the applicant. Mm -hmm. I only went there when there was a complaint, and what I saw, in my opinion, doesn't fit Bolton's bylaw. So I made my, determin my determination accordingly. If this board feels, you know something, this is a home occupation, we'll allow that thing three times a year, it can stay there no more than one day at a time, so be it. I'm not the guy looking at it. So I don't live in town. So it, regardless of whether it's optically visually cleaned up, like you have a like saying it, everything's inside, right? so don't see anything. But what's being performed inside, regardless of whether you can't see it, if it's if it's contained and it and, and it's visually nice, it's still in your mind a not a permitted use. Okay. The bylaw says it's right. not a permitted right. use. Uh, if you go up to a factory, an industrial factory producing plastic goods, blow mold, mm -hmm. you know, and injection molding machines from the outside, mm -hmm. if they made it look like a barn, the big difference is I still couldn't. We're not I still couldn't. Any. Not I could not, but I could not. No, it's not a big difference. It's what the bylaw allows. If you were doing that for agriculture, you could do it because it says agriculture, conservation, open space. You can do all that stuff. I we allow that. I think if we were, if, I think if these were computer parts, we wouldn't even be here. I think that people are because of they relate to automobiles. They're well, confusing. Well, it says other retail, wholesale, so, or service, mm -hmm. and it doesn't specify what type. Right. So, so to me, I didn't. I mean, I wasn't the. If the only thing auto related to me, if they came and said it was, there were oils and gasoline, and if something, no, no, I know they're not. But to me, that would you know, raise my antenna for a safety issue, fire, hazard, you know, things like that. The fact that it's pipe, I mean, I'm, you know, I'm the least mechanical auto person. You know, so mm -hmm. the fact that they're parts, you know, yes, we need them for our vehicles, but if it's that versus if it was computer parts or whatever, I'm, I'm looking at it as, but again, go back to the use, not necessarily the you know, item. What's in the box? Right. Yes, you know, yeah. and how it's stored, and, yeah, right, but if it's, oh. you know, I mean, they struggle with an accessory use for Dunkin' Donuts in, in uh, the country cupboard, or not specifically the country cupboard. Well, there's an example of an accessory use within a commercial entity. But when they were proposing the gas station mm -hmm. that was going to go up at the 495 interchange when you get the on ramp mm -hmm. to 495 right there, they, they found out there's too much ledge or they abandoned that project. They went in front of the planning board. The whole issue was can the Dunkin' Donuts go in the gas station because of its accessory use? You know, so so basically, what I'm getting at is, they have to determine that because the bylaw said you have to do something that's accessory, they, is, is allowable, and then the planning board had to determine what they would consider mm -hmm. accessory. So it doesn't matter the outside appearance of anything doesn't matter mm -hmm. because nobody knows what's going on. They could be making bombs inside there; we don't know. Mm -hmm. But the issue to me, as the zoning official. Mm -hmm. When I look at the use, I evaluate the zoning table in where it says service, I mean retail, wholesale, or other service is not allowed. I can only say that that's not allowed because it is, whether it's IT related or not, it, it, it's, I mean, I, I don't see it. Just a couple other points I'd like to make is that um, from a safety standpoint, I mean, you have this barn, you, you, you can see his own children's swing set like within feet of it. You know, he's not going to bring something in that's going to pose a risk to his own family. You have the, the closest neighbor and the only neighbor in sight here at the meeting saying there isn't anything going on. Noise, vibration, dust, heat, odors, glare, traffic congestion. What, um, on the inside of, what's on the inside of this uh, fence now? Uh, that's the few paths. Do you have anything burning in there today? Uh, it's brush, I think. Burning? Yeah, burning. Because I saw smoke coming from yeah, here today. Still, we and just, so I didn't know what, no, you know. We're just 
trimming uh, some of the rose bushes over there. So getting rid of the brush. Some of the burning brush? Or just because I, I saw some burning. I mean, again, yeah. I drive by it not to look at the house to say, what are they doing? Because, yeah, but it's just that I go by Harvard Road every day, and it's like, you know, you see, you know, and because I knew I had a hearing tonight, I'm like, okay, but this is new, and I hadn't in the past seen any type of smoke or emission or anything coming out of this, so it's just a question of that. Okay. So um, I, I just basically looking at this thing as one of scale, you know, when you, if you want to look at the internet world, this is what's happening now, and on one extreme we have Amazon.com, on the other extreme we got the little old lady selling jelly over the world. Mm -hmm. And somewhere in between this fits, and I'm not sure how, I'm not comfortable necessarily with the way it's being proposed, I don't see any limits on this activity. At what point does this thing start to exceed its, you know, reasonable level? I guess and, you know, if you're selling a few parts on the web, well, you know, no big deal. Well, the if you take the square footage of the house and the barn, it's about 6,800 6, square feet. Half of the barn is 1,400. If you divide it by four, 25. We're, we're using less than 25 percent of the space on the property. I would define that as incidental. Um, if you want to limit the amount of space that can be used, I mean, we're willing to work with you. We're not. He's not looking to expand. No, bars not getting any bigger. Mm -hmm. um, well, no, you're right. That, yeah. you're, you're right. You have a confined or defined space, so um, yeah. he'd never exceed, he'd never exceed the employees. Oh. Now, is this your is this your primary business? Is this your only? This is my only. Mm -hmm. this yeah. Okay. This is my yes. Okay. So the, 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 the law states that, you know, other retail, wholesale, or service is a no. So can you tell us that it's not a retail, wholesale, or another service? Because that's, that's, I mean, that's the big yeah. kicker here. It's not wholesale. It's not retail, in my opinion, is something at the Natick Mall or the Solomon Pond Mall where well. people are coming to the premises. No one comes to this premises. The world has changed, so I think those definitions are rather obsolete at this point. I mean, how many of us buy stuff online? <laughs> I mean, but they're not defined in the bylaws. So I know. some of this that, that is, is subjective. That is we, a problem. And we have to go by the prongs that are in the bylaw, which we think we meet all four. Um, you know, I'm going to ask the board just to see if. And they're not sure as well as it would make, make sense or not, but um, so we've seen a couple pictures, you know, and we have personal experience driving just by driving by, so but that doesn't mean you know that that equates to much other than your personal experience. So, does it make sense, or does it would it make sense, or <coughs> is we interested in doing like a site walk and seeing the, the facility? Is, to see really what the operation is and what's there, or, 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 does that would that help as far as to crystallize that what it really is? I mean, to me, uh, I mean, we we could vote on have, you know, it's assuming we we a hearing and then make a vote, um, but to the extent that if people had an idea of like, you know, if the owner was uh, uh, agreeable, saying yeah, pick a day and come. We'll show you it, you know, uh, does that help us make a decision, a better decision, more important decision? Yeah, I think that would help. The other thing is uh, some kind of agreement that if your business takes off that you're going to have to find another place. I think it's scale, scale. Yeah, I can't survive in there if it grows, mm -hmm. right. I mean, the way it keeps growing anyway. That's, that's one of the issues I have, is, you yeah. know, yeah. at some point it just you're doesn't work. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. Yeah. And that's the point anyway, is that the, this wasn't a permanent uh, plan. This was, you know, set for a specific amount of time. And that's one of the challenges with the internet too, because maybe it takes off, maybe it doesn't. Mm -hmm. And you need... This is the third facility I've been in. It's showing 80% growth each year. Yeah. There's no way it survives in that barn for longer than a couple of years. Longer than a year, really. Well, you, well right, but even so... To, to the extent that it was a permitted use in you outgrew it in that you know, so the, what I'm trying to at least in my own mind get comfortable with that regardless of the scale 
that whether you've hit the tripping point and you're overgrown a permitted use versus is it really a permitted use? So I, that's right for me. I, right. I'd we like to, it's see, use. to see it to define is it a, a yeah. for myself to say is it a permitted use? Um, that may be helpful to me, but if the board were to say no, they're comfortable, they understand it, um, and they wanted to move on a decision to it, then I don't. Um, I think it would be helpful from my standpoint. Would you help yeah. it? Yeah. So, so, yeah. would it be possible to do a site walk of, it, of the premises? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we could just, you know, me as the, the boy go take a walk with it, with the, you know, obviously with, you know, you are, you know visualize, see what it is, and, you know, um, and then we could come back. Have a discussion on what we saw, and you know, with the other facts that have been presented, and, and sure. make a series of points. I mean, I don't want to be rash because it is, say, a person's livelihood. I mean, um, it's not like you say, yeah, I'm going something else. This is just on the side, so it's on the side. I, you know, we want to do some, you know, due diligence feels that I will only feel we want to do the best for the town and potentially a resident that that's still out there. Mm -hmm. you know, in, in all fairness to the applicant, mm -hmm. um, just as I make determinations mm -hmm. relative to where, in my opinion, the cutoff of overextending uh, the landscape and mm -hmm. business, mm -hmm. obviously a subjective determination because of the way the bylaw is written. Mm -hmm. You would customarily see somebody with lawn equipment in a business. Mm -hmm. uh, if there's a happy medium that could be found where you would find that I'm in error and that there's a limitation on what can happen because what happens with businesses like this is that you will find in a matter of time as you get busier, people do overextend and if you limit the amount of storage that he can have inside that facility, then how do you periodically check that he hasn't exceeded that? Mm -hmm. So let's say, for example, the board was to allow a tractor trailer truck to show up three, four times a year for a limited amount of time. One day, no more than 48 yeah. hours, no more than 24 hours. And I'm only saying this to be helpful for the board, mm -hmm. that if there are limitations set, then they have to be set. Mm -hmm. So I know if I have a complaint on landscape and equipment on uh, Wilder Road, mm -hmm which there's a next door neighbor in the wide open, that guy has never overextended. He has a neighbor that uses the common driveway and drives by his house and sees everything, and he's not opposed to it. Then we know, Erica and I know, that on his form of intent, mm -hmm. as this gentleman filled out and I denied, there's a limitation. You know, maybe, and I don't know, maybe only FedEx trucks show up, because that's customarily what you say. Yeah. Uh, maybe, Maybe we can't define service, wholesale, or retail. I don't know. My determination is subjective based on what I know of the town, what I know when I read verbatim, mm -hmm. what the layman on the street would read. Uh, if this board was to determine that a certain percentage of the barn could be used for that, it can say other than the skids and the tractor trailer, there's never been unsightliness that I'm aware of and I drive by there often. You drive by every day. Yeah, I mean, the, the pallets are, I mean, I've seen variety from you know, stacks of like five, six to look like 15, 20 at a time. Yeah. And so some people could think that's unsightly. I mean, but I, I mean, if it's to be picked up and recycled or whatever, I don't, you know, well, it's okay, whatever, I don't know. Not in plain view. If it's not in plain view, it's behind a fence and it's well, picked no, up. it is in plain view. It's at the I know it is now. Street. I have pictures of it. Yeah, those, in the street. Right. 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 What I'm saying is but, if there's a happy medium, yeah, okay. but I mean. But to the detriment the neighborhood that's to the point of a gentleman back there, he could ride his bike back there and say, hey, these pretty cool, push one and topple over on them and fall into the road where a car comes. Acts, you know, so there's things that we, we want to look at that and say, okay, uh, there are detriments that we want. My point at. being, mm -hmm. whether he's allowed to do it or not, right. really to me it doesn't matter to me because I have to be unbiased. Okay. The planning board, the zoning board, they know best what was intended under their bylaw no matter how it's written. This attorney could take you verbatim <clears throat> with the bylaw, pick it apart as I picked apart the fact that he left out the word customary. It works that way. That's just how it goes. If you find that, you know, that would be customary, please keep in mind what you do for one, you have to do for others because it would be arbitrary and capricious if you didn't do it for someone else and you allow someone else to do it. There could be limitations set that maybe put it in the category of a home occupation. 
as this gentleman said, it's a different world. Mm -hmm. It's an internet world. I understand that, but but I don't take offense to you being against my determination or being for it. Mm -hmm. I'm always trying to be as helpful as I can and allow people to do whatever they're allowed to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not an obstructionist, mm -hmm. but when I read the bylaw, I kind of put it in that category. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's if it's grossly used for that use. Well, just for the record, you have a job to do, and I did from it. the years I've been involved in the town, you, you do your job, you do it with pride, you do it with, you say, unbiased. You know, depend, you make a decision, and decision sometimes, some people will say, I applaud that decision, other people will say, I yeah. can't stand that decision. So, yeah. But from our perspective, you're doing the right thing. Someone complained, you looked at the facts, and you said, hmm, someone has to... Somebody know. has to look at my opinion right. and, and, so and make a judgment call. And, and, right. and, and so I understand and how it works. The decision we make, we understand that you are uh, you don't hold it against us. We don't, we are not out to get it. We want to just get it right. So that's why the, that, that's correct. That's why there's an avenue for the applicant <coughs> to be here based on my determination. But I want to let you know mm -hmm. that if you do set parameters and you do find this to be under the home occupation, set those parameters somehow, some way, because if you don't, <clears throat> it's a nature of people to creep in. I showed you the example of the landscape of well, You That's would right. never think twice about driving by someone's house yeah. with two pickup trucks and a couple of trailers and mowers. You'd think twice if they had the chip of the storage bin, the yeah. back hole, the front end loader. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's why we limit it, because we have to make that subjective determination and say, you're limited to this, you go over that, you generally don't see a backhoe for a landscaping company under a home occupation. So again, I take no offense to the determination of the board. I hope that the applicant has an opportunity to fit within the bylaw. Mm -hmm. And if he can do so, I don't believe he's there yet. But I'm judging my determination based on, as soon as I looked in, and maybe because it's high pile storage, all I could see was cardboard boxes, as you saw. I didn't go in the barn. I only saw what I took a picture of. Well, so and I think it's a wise idea to take a second. I do too. I, you know, but because just from drive by, there were times where I said, "Well, I'm not knowing if this was even going to ever become an issue." Um, it was like, "Oh, what's going on?" Because it's a, there's a lot of stuff stored there. You know, you can see just the front of it, and then. All right, so let's pick it. Let's see if we can pick a date. Does it have to be a posted meeting? Uh, there would have to be a posted. Oh, not a posted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. No, there's not really any. There shouldn't be any. No, we just usually just, go look and, and we ask questions right. and ask people. We'll continue to deliver and make a decision. Right. Um, do you want to set the date for the state visit now? Do you want me to send out a beautiful? How do you want to do that? Let's set it. Let's set it. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, and if we do it sooner than later, that way we can maybe. How often do you meet? It's at hot, yeah. it's at hot, yeah. so, uh, but we can. We'll have to schedule that tonight right. as well. We can schedule that. If we know what date we're going to have that, then we can say, okay, how about the following week? Come back. You know. um, I'm on vacation next week. Yeah. Okay. So it's Saturday to Saturday, so. Right, so. Um, how about the following week any time or uh, uh, anyone have any restrictions like you know a work day week in, in the morning or shooting back for work or no, I don't know if I'm to do it in the morning. Yeah. Did you say you'd rather like I wouldn't be able to yeah. do it oh, okay. unless it was a Saturday. Okay. Thursday the second works for me. After, uh, after, 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 yeah. after, after, yeah. after, after, what time after work, what time with your flexibility, because I, you I know. get home, get back to Boulder around 6.30. 30. So, we do it at like a, the second, was it the second you said? Thursday the second. Thursday the second, second, second at, um, at like 7 p.m. Is your time with your traffic or do you think 7 p.m.? Oh, it's second. Works for me. Is that the second? Three back? Okay. Yeah, that works. Is that yeah. a minimal too? Yeah. I coach football in Hudson, <coughs> so there might be a different attorney here. Um, but that's, that's fine. fine. Wait, is that, that's for the site visit, I thought. No. That's for site visit, yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. We'll give them the same great treatment. 
I just know we'll have practice that night. So. Yeah. I can send a different event. Okay. Unless you felt you want to think about it. No. Work okay. I, it's every night in August, yeah, so just right. go ahead and schedule it. Okay. All right, so we'll... Um, can we set the next meeting as well? Okay, yeah, so then um, calendar-wise... Yeah, I'll be better with a doodle on that one because I, at this point, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. If we just... Uh, uh, a little detail to that. If we don't set it tonight, though, then I'll have to repost the advertisements and okay. well, let's, let's see if we can set it. Let's yeah. see if, if we can. If, if there's a problem, we'll do the duel. But, uh, All right. So, how about what the, um, any other time that week or the following week for, um, for uh, okay. Wednesdays are not good for me. Wednesday, okay. This is, this is an exception. the 6th, it works for me. No, I can't do Monday the 6th. Okay. Tuesday the 7th? Oh no, I can't do Tuesday. No, I can't do Wednesday or Thursday. How about how about thir the Thursday of the week that we do the site walk? Okay, well, it, it is Thursday. Oh, 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 I thought it was Tuesday. Sorry, I had to put my date down. So it's Thursday the second. Unless the board wants to meet after the site walk at seven thirty. Mm -hmm. well, well, we can do that. that. Would that give you enough time? Just yeah, I ten I, minutes. But yeah, it's right down the street. We drive down, we take a walk through, and uh, yeah. you know. Um, yeah, Site so visit at six thirty. Meeting at seven thirty. Well, it's, Andy's got to get back from work, so I don't want to rush him. Six forty-five. Six forty-five. Site walk. Seven thirty or thereafter. You know, we'll be coming back. So right, seven thirty thereafter. Mm -hmm. That works. Okay. So let's do, try to wrap it all up on the, uh, the second thing. So we have to do a motion for the site walk or just a motion in general? Just the motion for the, for the hearing. Okay, so uh, I motion a uh, site walk for August 2nd, Thursday at 6.45 to be followed by the continuation of the hearing at 7.30 in the house. Second. Second by Brad. Uh, Brian, so all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Mr. Chairman, just for uh, just for uh, just for the record, mm -hmm. I'm going to stand with my determination. So now it's completely up to the board. Correct. When I make a determination, I try to do it unbiasedly, mm -hmm. and I don't make that determination in writing until I feel confident that I made my decision properly. Mm -hmm. If this board so overturns it, so be it. That's mm -hmm. why the applicant is here. So I do stand on my determination. So now it's up, obviously, you know it's up to your board if you want to overturn my determination. I don't feel it's necessary for me to be here. I've given my evidence, and now it's up to you to see if I'm in error or not. That's fact. And even to that point, though, you're welcome if you want to join at the site walk. Just to, I mean, again, it may not change what your, your decision at the point, but if you just for your own information benefit, you're welcome. Yeah. And, and, and I would just like to add, when I review the bylaw, I go by what I read in the bylaw. Mm -hmm. I think the zoning board and the planning board who puts these bylaws together and the town that puts the bylaws together have a better understanding of it. But I've made my determination based on the bylaw. Mm -hmm. And if I'm incorrect in my determination, and you so find that that type of use is, is to a scale that would allow a home occupation, <coughs> please know that as i said i do not take offense to that mm -hmm, no uh, but i did make my determination I did put it in writing okay. and i stand by that determination okay, thanks all right so maybe i missed something in the beginning but what's the name of the company and how is it registered in town maybe that would tell us that if it's not retail it's not wholesale so what is it it's got it, it, it's got to be someplace where businesses register in town I think I registered online. Is that a sense of the DBA? Yeah, TSV or something. So it's a under yeah, business certificate for the clerk's office. Mm -hmm. Generally, what happens is the form of intent for the type of business is evaluated yeah. for zoning compliance. So, did you find a business certificate? Is it? No. I don't issue the business okay. certificates. Uh, what happens is uh, when someone goes to the town hall before they can start a business. They fill out what's called a form of intent, mm -hmm. and that allows us to evaluate that mm -hmm. for zoning compliance. Mm -hmm. So if somebody wanted to be in a, the strip mall, the little commercial strip mall where the country mm -hmm. cupboard is, they should first come in. See, they would, let's say, for example, they lease space out. There's an open vacancy. 
Somebody might want to go, and I, I, and I always use the extreme. Somebody might say, oh, you want to rent the space from me? You can rent the space. We have 3,000 square feet right next to the country cupboard. Okay, yeah, they rent it. They go in, they start making bombs. We don't allow that type of use in that district. So what happens is the person that has to register their business in town in order to have a checking account, what they do is they go to the clerk's office to register their business. She will not allow them to register a business until they figure out they file a form of intent. The form of intent gives us an understanding of what type of business it is. Erica and I sign off on that to say that is an allowable. So the home use. occupation does not have to file for a business? That's by right. Uh, technically. That's what I'm saying, so by right, so maybe there is a Maybe in some you know, cases, uh, certain, I, I was told uh, before that certain type of limited liability corporations don't need to, there's certain, the clerk would have a better understanding when you need the business certificate. You do a DBA. You need a business certificate. I, you you yeah. probably yeah. do. Yeah. yeah, and we've done those as far as form of intent, yeah. depending on. Can you check, Erica, if there's any when you're in the office? Check. If there's any business certificate for this business, for the, just okay, so that, you know, check. the question was asked, and I don't have the answer, so. Yeah, I don't know either, yeah. so I'll, I'll check mm -hmm. that. Okay, perfect. All right, so we've got the timeline scheduled, so we're all set. So. Um, just to clarify, page. too, we didn't mention that um, the continuing hearing will be at this location, the Hulton Building. I, I said the Hulton Building, yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Oh, did you say yep. that? Mm -hmm. I apologize. Yeah. I missed okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we just need to continue the hearing until this to uh, August 2nd. I'll I'll make, I will make the motion to continue the hearing to August 2nd. Second. Okay. Seconded by Andy. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So motion granted will uh, continue August 2nd. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.